How do you fix a sodic soil? Well, first of all, we have to talk about exactly what a sodic soil is. Now, to me, a sodic soil just means I got a bunch of sodium. Sounds pretty simple, but there is a technical definition and there's a few certain factors, so I had to pull out my sheet just so I could remember what they were. Technically, a sodic soil has electrical conductivity less than four. It's got a soil pH greater than 8.5, sodium adsorption ratio of greater than 13, and poor soil physical condition. So if you've got that, you've got a sodic soil. You really had me at sodium, Brian. If you've got a lot of sodium out in a soil, what we end up seeing is that water has a tough time even penetrating and, and absorbing into that soil. Wow, if you can't even get water to get into a soil, you've got some real problems. And then you think about that pH. Sodium has been shown to raise pH about four to one versus calcium. So high calcium soils can be high pH, but a high sodium soil, wow, over an 8.5 pH, we've got a really difficult time getting microbes to survive in an environment like that. All right, I don't care if you have a saline soil, a sodic soil, whatever it is, you've got to start with the root cause of the problem. Yes, there are Band-Aid approaches you can take, but I want to go back to drainage. Get some tile in the ground, and it might take a lot of tile. If you have very heavy soil, you might need tile in the worst sodic spots every 10, 15, 20 feet, something like that. Once you improve your drainage, now we've got to look at your soil test and see what else we have in the ground. Here's what I'm looking for. Do you have high levels of sulfur and do you have high levels of calcium? All right, to get that sodium to move out of the soil, yes, drainage is going to be a big deal but now we've got to get something else to grab onto that sodium to form a salt that we can get to leach down through the soil. Sulfur is one of those things that we hear a lot about that guys want to get sulfur out there, get that to attach to that sodium and get it to move. That's fine. You may have enough sulfur in your soil already. That's why that soil test is so critical. If we've got high levels of, of sulfur out there and we improve the drainage, now we can get things to move and we may be fine just doing the drainage and we're ready to go. Well, you might, but I, we're talking ridiculously high levels of sulfur. So if you've got a thousand parts per million of sulfur, then yes, you're probably good. The drainage alone is going to fix it. And over the next 10 to 20 years through natural rainfall and normal soil activity, you're going to see the sodium levels really drop. But if you don't have very extremely high levels of sulfur, if you only have, let's say, 50 parts per million, that's not enough. Our suggestion would be get some elemental sulfur out there. The other thing you may consider is the use of gypsum. Let's say that you're low on not only sulfur, but you're also low on calcium. Well, we want to get calcium in that soil too for a couple of reasons. The first and most important reason why is if you have lots of calcium in your soil, your soil has better porosity. In other words, there's more oxygen that's going to move through, more moisture can move through, it's easier to flush salts out of that soil. You want good levels of calcium. The other reason why we want good calcium is calcium is tremendously important for all crop production. So you have to have high calcium. We want over 65% base saturation calcium up to as much as 80% base saturation calcium. That's what we're looking for. So again, if you just have low sulfur, add elemental sulfur. If you have low sulfur and low calcium, use gypsum. So far we've given you a few things to do. Now I'll give you one thing to not do. If you're contributing to the sodium problem, stop! If you're over applying manure, for example, or you're using poor quality water for irrigation, you've got to stop that right now. You can't continue to add more sodium to this equation. A little bit of sodium can become a lot of sodium when you think of the thousands of gallons of irrigation water that go on that field every year. Well, once again, you absolutely can fix a sodic soil. It's going to start by improving your drainage. After that, you got to look at your soil test. You may need elemental sulfur. You may need gypsum. You might not need anything, just the drainage alone, but do everything you can to get that sodic soil fixed. Also, one last thing I'd throw in there, if you want to use some high carbon residue, some straw or something like that, and incorporate that into the ground to get some or organic material out there, that sometimes can help as well. You may be able to identify a sodic soil now, but can you identify our weed of the week? It's coming up next.